Is this a finished product or is this thing still in the works? I think what you're going to see is by next week, Republicans coming together with this reasonable, responsible plan. It's the Biden administration that continues to be dangerous and reckless as it comes to the nation's finances. We've put forward a plan to bring us back to stability, to help workers get back to work, to grow the economy. We have a huge opportunity here to help the American people who month after month find themselves, their wages falling further and further behind inflation. Yeah, but at the moment, you don't have 218 to get this over the finish line. I actually think we do. I've been in a lot of these conversations with my colleagues over the past well, few a lot weeks. Of a lot of your colleagues are going on other networks and TV saying, if I had to vote for it today, it's a no. Well, right. Everybody's trying to move this bill in the home stretch. I understand that. But broadly speaking, we have the overall consensus here that we got to be responsible, we got to be reasonable, we got to get spending under control, we got to get workers back to work, and we got to grow the economy. The proposal is put forward by Speaker McCarthy, does just that. I think by next week, you'll see Republicans united moving the ball forward. I spoke earlier today with uh, Byron Donalds, of course, the Republican from Florida, who's been fairly central in these negotiations. He was in the room, uh, for instance, for that uh, Freedom Caucus debate today. And I asked him about regular order. As you remember, when Speaker McCarthy was vying for the gavel, he said it would be transparency and regular order at last restored to the House of Representatives. But the committees have been essentially bypassed here. Here's what Congressman... Uh, the congressman said to that question. Members are going to have five days to review this. Five days. Nancy Pelosi would drop stuff on the floor in like a day. And the day would mean she dropped it at 1159 mm -hmm. and we're voting at 10 a.m. And for Nancy Pelosi, that was a day. So this is a very open process. <laughs> Again, that's Byron Donalds earlier today on Bloomberg Sound On on the radio. Is this the new definition? of regular order and transparency? We would have loved the president to come to the table 75 days ago and begin negotiations so we could go through the full vetting process and the regular order process that we would love to do. Well, what about in your own house, though? You bypassed the committee, the budget committee on this. Yeah, but ultimately, this has been a full conversation with all 222 members. I've been in countless meetings. We've been reviewing this legislative text. The ideas are thoroughly vetted with the broad array of members of the conference. The text has been produced. It can be reviewed and read by everyone. I think we'll be ready to go mm -hmm. next week. I think there's plenty of time to digest this. But admittedly, the clock is ticking, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. the president continues to keep his head in the sand. But you know what the president and the White House will say. They will say, I gave my budget to the American people, outlined what the, our priorities are, and I'm willing to sit down with Kevin McCarthy and have this meeting, but he has to show me a budget. Why haven't the Republicans been able to put forward a budget? It's the same reason the Democrats in the Senate haven't moved forward. They're clean debt ceiling. Why haven't they done that? We've put forward a plan to bring ourselves back to fiscal stability. We have a huge opportunity here. I think it's essential the president comes to the table. So what is the next step here? Uh, we're looking at a potential vote on Wednesday. Is, is that your expectation that sits the floor a week from now? Uh, ultimately, it'll be a decision by Speaker McCarthy. But I think we do have the votes. I think we'll have consensus. And I think we'll be able to move the middle of next week. Then it's that opportunity for the president to be a grown-up in the room, come to the table and have a conversation about how we get back to fiscal stability. The president's refused to even come to the table to find one dollar of savings over the past 10 weeks. That's unacceptable. It's dangerous. It's reckless. What do you make of the bipartisan group? About 60 of them that are looking for a... They're centrist. They want a plan forward if McCarthy and Biden are unable to come to the table. Do you agree with them? Should that also be happening in the background? We're going to be having lots of conversations. But if you look at what the problem solvers has put forward, it's not a clean debt ceiling move, right? It's looking for ability to actually save taxpayer money to grow the economy. So in that sense, it's quite positive. We'd love to have the president come to the table and negotiate rather than one-off Democrats in the House. The opportunity here is for the president to come to the table, stop being dangerous and reckless by demanding my way or the highway. It's clear, Congressman, you don't want a clean debt limit bill without a conversation or a deal, as if we can call it that, on the budget moving forward. But can you tell our viewers today that not only will we avoid a default, but we will not come to the cliff near enough for a credit downgrade as happened back in 2011? I remain concerned, and I remain concerned because the president's not coming to the table to find even one dollar in savings. The president's path that he's been on is dangerous. The president's path is reckless. It's Republicans in the House that have been reasonable and responsible, putting forward actual substantive legislation to move this country forward to make sure that we avoid that exact situation. I'm optimistic that next week Republicans are going to move this bill forward, save the American taxpayers' money, grow the economy, get workers back to work. 
Then it's up to the president. Is he going to continue his reckless path of refusing to negotiate? Or is he going to come to the table and have that adult conversation and move the country forward? You know what the White House, though, has been saying, of course. The former President Trump has even said not lifting the debt ceiling, even a clean matter or regarding negotiations, that they call is reckless. But since we have you, we also want to get your thoughts on the fact that Tuesday may be the day that President Biden makes some sort of announcement. Aides are putting some final touches. It's going to be some sort of video. Obviously, he is going to be the Democratic candidate at this moment. Who is he going to be standing against running for 2024? I can't imagine anybody coming to the table and thinking that the past 24 months, 24 consecutive months of pay cuts for the American people, inflation running rampant, the war on energy driven by this administration, the fact that this administration, one party Democratic control, paid workers not to work, people are going to be looking for a change. There's a lot of time the media is going to speculate, but ultimately, <laughs> at the end of the day, in my home state of Milwaukee, next summer, we're going to have a Republican candidate, and I think we're mm -hmm. going to see that person successful. You are nothing if not consistent, Congressman. I give you massive marks for it, but it does appear. <laughs> that Donald Trump is going to be the nominee. Can he beat Joe Biden? I think, I think all, we got a lot of candidates that can beat Joe Biden. I think we, that we no. will ultimately have that conversation. There's because a whole, right now, the former president is, is winning, and all of the polls show that Biden would lose potentially get a DeS against a DeSantis, but he would clearly win against Trump. And right now, though, Trump is owning the Republican field. I think when you actually have the polling that I've seen shows DeSantis up on Biden in a number of states. It shows Trump up on Biden in a number of states. I think at the end of the day, when this is a head-to-head -head matchup, people are going to look at the fact that their paycheck has fallen vis-a-vis -vis inflation consistently for the past 24 months. And I'm concerned for the months ahead. The American families are going to be ready for a change, going to be ready for leadership, ready for fiscal stability, and I think ready to send Joe Biden packing. Do you want to see a wider field when you actually get to the debate stage finally in this primary uh, contest? How many can I mean, is, is this the field now, or do you want to see more Republicans raise their hand? for this opportunity? I think we're going to see more candidates get into the race. That's up to every given individual. What I want to see is more Republicans talking about the future of the country and the pro-growth policies that actually get us out of this dire situation with $31 trillion in debt. We have lots of plans about getting workers back to work, unleashing American energy, getting our spending under control. That's what we need to have more of a conversation of. And I'm hopeful that candidates who get into this race on the Republican side are talking about those key items.